The world of Elder Scrolls is full of badass evil bosses, monsters, and dragons. This is a game with an almost uncountable amount of side quests filled with dungeons, layers, and plots. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 most evil female villains in the province of Skyrim. We're not counting Daedrus in this top 10 to keep it fair and balanced. Plus, they don't even have genders in the first place. But with that in mind, let's start counting. Sapphire. Sapphire is a member of the Thieves' Guild in Riften, known for her particular obsession with stealing gems. Though she has probably the saddest backstory on this list. Heavy, unforgettable trauma that has made her completely unempathetic to the world. And now she's taking her cut. She used to live in a pig farm when she was a child with her lone mother, but they were so poor they had to eat the same slop they used to feed their animals. The farm was then raided by bandits who killed her mother and took her as a prize beating her and violating her for weeks. It was then that she realized what she had to do to survive. After getting their confidence in the middle of a random night, she slit the throats of every bandit in the camp and left. Since then, she has joined the Dark Brotherhood to use her skills and her proficiency in killing people for money, murdering whoever she was told to kill. Eventually, she ended up joining the Thieves' Guilds, though not for the stopping of the killings, but for more money, swindling merchants and stealing gems. Lua Allskaven during the Great War, Sael fought for the side of the Empire, and during the takeover of the Imperial City, he died. His wife, Lua Al Skaven, was destroyed by these news, and she spent the better part of the next couple of decades studying the forbidden arts of necromancy in order to bring his body back to life. She became particularly proficient in raising the dead, but the real problem began when she needed to find the right body to host the soul of her beloved. See, the husband's body, Sael's body, was burnt, so she needed to summon his soul and and planted in someone else's. During her long search, she found the resting place of an old couple that caught her attention. It was a sad, real love story from ages past. In this story, a woman and a man fight against each other in a war, but as they had their duel, they realized that they were equals and fell in love. After a long season of peace and prosperity, the man was bitten by a dangerously poisonous snake. The woman seeked for help across the mountains and found an Akaviri vendor with a healing elixir. As she came back and poured the healing elixir on the dying man's throat, she herself got bitten by the same snake. And without any more medicine and after her exhaustion from her travels, she passed away immediately. The man then dedicated the rest of his life to build her a tomb. And after the tomb was finished, he committed suicide to rest for the rest of time inside with her beloved. Moved by this story, Lua Al Skaven found that the body of Holger could serve as the host for her husband's soul. She travels to the crypt where the body is located and with the help of her undead slaves and her small army of necromancers, she tunneled through the resting place in order to resurrect the lost bodies of of these far gone lovers. But as she was convoking her last rites, the dragonborn interrupts her conjuring and Lua Al Skaven is killed before she can finally see her husband again. And with her death, the possibility of her necromantic attack on the Empire is thwarted before it even began. Maven Blackbriar. When it comes to power, you can only get so far without either terrible magic or ruling a kingdom. Maven Blackbriar has broken these suppositions by virtually becoming one of the most feared and respected women in the entire province by sheer political maneuvering. Maven is the example of what could possibly be achieved if you're a titan of industry and use your connections to maximize control and suppress opposition. Using the wealth that she has accrued by selling the most popular mead in Skyrim together with constant embezzling of coins illegal dealings, ransoming deals and people, she has managed to keep the whole city of Riften directly under her control. Her political power has kept the Thieves' Guild safe, who now owe her for her protection. In turn, the Thieves' Guild steal for her against targets of her choosing typically political enemies or people who annoy her. Now, those that anger her suffer from Maven's alliance with the Dark Brotherhood, who hold her in very high esteem as a constant source of money. Her family is not worse for wear, with a daughter who is obsessed with the concept of death, who dabbles in poisons and tests these poisons on living animals, and her grandson who happens to be a murderer. She maintains her grasp in power by forcefully and illegally taking down her competitors, by killing those who threaten her and by keeping a close ear at 
at everything that happens within the province. More so than that, she has allied herself with the Thalmor, whom she trades information with. She is particularly adept at avoiding the law, either by constantly bribing guards or by literally buying the Jarl, who is quite basically on her pocket. If the Empire wins in the Civil War, her connections will put her in the Jarl's position, and when that happens, there will be nothing to stop her from shredding this facade of a business magnate and become the true tyrant that she aspires to be. Fiola. By the dangerous mire of Eastmarch, you can find the bandit keep of Mistwatch. In there you will find a scared old man named Krister, who has come to this tower seeking the love of his life, his wife, who disappeared abruptly. Many have been disappearing from the area and people believe that they have been abducted by bandits, so Krister has come here to look for his wife and save her, possibly from the bandits of Mistwatch. And so the Dragonborn, after being tasked with rescuing the damsel in distress from the terrible bandits, quickly realizes that the bandit chief is actually the wife. Turns out Fiola purposefully left the old scab, wanting something different than being a simple farmer. She traveled and found these bandits, got in with them, and now leads them, stealing and murdering as she pleases. Fiola refuses to take in the husband, refusing to even communicate with him, asking the Dragonborn to get rid of Krister as long as he doesn't kill him. The Dragonborn will then have the option of either killing Fiola and telling Krister of the news, or helping Fiola and lie to Krister in order to get rid of him. If the Dragonborn follows through with Fiola's side, then she will be left in peace leading the bandits of Mistwatch and killing and stealing happily ever after. Laylet. In Morthal, there's a group of vampires that are currently trying to take over the whole damn place. Under orders from the master vampire Movarth, Alva set out to infiltrate the city. The plan was for her to charm someone who could protect her during the day and then slowly but surely charm every single guard. The idea being to eliminate any protection so that the coven of vampires could invade the town and then use it as a blood farm. That way the vampires wouldn't have to live in caves anymore and could use the city for protection. Alva ended up turning Rogar into a vampire so that he would protect her during the day while she slept and then eventually fed on Lailette and turned her into a vampire as well so that she could become her handmaiden. Now Lailette is our villain here because she was tasked with disposing Rogar's family. But even though the idea was to do it subtly and make it look like an accident, Lailette decided instead to burn the whole family alive by incinerating the house. Whilst this was happening, Lailette in the middle of the fight Fire encountered the young child Helgi, burning alive. At that very moment, she thought it better to turn the child into a vampire and keep her. She bit the neck of the little girl, but the transformation wasn't enough to save her and Helgi, still not fully transformed, burned and died. For the next couple of days, Leilet had been attempting to use necromantic magic to raise this child from the grave in order to turn her into an undead slave, having gained some form of obsession with this little girl. It seems that the experiments that Leilet had been doing upon the corpse of Helgi has sort of transformed her into a ghost, which is now cursed to roam around the site of her death. Just creepy, weird and wholly evil. Delphine. She gives you a quest to kill Parthernex. Babette. The Dark Brotherhood is filled with all kinds of murderers, certainly some more interesting than others. Thing is, a lot of these assassins have their own reasons to kill. Some do it for the money, some for religious purposes, some most definitely do it for the thrill and the fun, but then there are others that are just sadistic monsters who take too much pleasure in the art of killing. This is the case for Babette. She loves to talk to her victims, to pretend to be an innocent little girl to get their attention and their trust directly before killing them. The moment of terror once they realize that she is no ordinary girl is the moment that Babette loves the most. It's just the, the act of betraying someone who sees you as someone to be protected is what she thrives in. And then of course, to mock the dead after they're dead and laugh in their face. And the thing is, she has been doing this the longest out of anyone in the sanctuary, being a vampire who has lived for over 300 years. 300 years of murdering and feeding and many of those years as part of the Brotherhood. When it comes to evil people, it is just very difficult to top her. Eola. Eola is the leader of the Coven of Cannibals in Redcliffe Cave a coven who frequently feed on the bodies of stolen corpses and murdered innocents. However, a coven of Namira is more than just a place to cannibalize, for they are also disciples of the Daedra, which means that they follow the Daedra's creed. Her creed, Namira's creed, dictates that they must spread disgust, be repulsive and produce decay. 
Now, following this creed, Eola has been hard at work with her followers by tormenting the people of Markarth and ordering them to create as much disgust and repulsion as it is possible. Banning is a breeder who supplies the city with horses and pets, animals which have been fed human meat in secret all of their lives. Lisbeth killed her husband and brother and, of course, fed on them. Hogni, Red Arm, stands in the middle of the marketplace and shops and cuts his meats directly in front of the women and children that pass by the store. He attempts to show them the gore of his work in order to produce disgust upon the populace. He also, whenever given the chance, sells human meat in disguise to his customers and forces them to imbibe in cannibalism without them knowing. Yola herself is a powerful mage who directs the group and leads in the ceremonies for Namira. Grelud the Kind now this one is a classic. Grelot is the headmistress of the Honor Hall Orphanage, an, an evil and twisted individual who mistreats the children in her care, emotionally torments them, and actively prevents them from being adopted. She beats the children whenever they misbehave and constantly yells at them, telling them that they will never be adopted. This part turns factual when you do end up downloading the Hearthfire expansion, because if you actually attempt to adopt one of the children under her care, she will straight up refuse to allow you to take them. The dark side to all of this is that hidden in one of the closets of the orphanage you can find shackles on the walls where presumably the children would be tied to, seemingly for such a long time that they even have buckets in there for them to relieve themselves while still imprisoned. Clearly just a despicable individual, in fact she is so evil that when you do kill her as part of the Dark Brotherhood questline, you do not even get a bounty. No one cares. The children cheer in joy as you kill the hag and the authorities simply let you go. Everyone knew how bad she was, which is why they gave her the name Grela the Kind in irony. Potema, the Wolf Queen. Few historic figures are viewed as unambiguously evil, but Potema, the so-called Wolf Queen of Solitude, surely qualifies for that dishonor. Potema was the type of queen who would kill you in an instant if you but simply looked at her the wrong way. Actually, not just kill you, but soul trap you to force you to live the rest of eternity in the soul cairn. In fact, she was so evil that it is believed that her spirit turned into a daedra upon death. Actually, so evil that her passing cursed the palace in solitude, cursing the next king. That king ended up being Pelagius the Mad, a person so mad that even Shogoreth found him amusing. Potema was so evil that she was blackmailing members of the Elder Council before she was even 13, and when her grandfather held her as a baby, even he could see that there was bloodlust in her eyes. Even as a baby, Potema always coveted the throne, the actual ruby throne in the Imperial City, but her lineage didn't quite line up for it. She was the second daughter, so she wasn't in line for the inheritance. Instead, she was sent to marry a king in Skyrim, in solitude, where she lived all of her life. Eventually, when her husband died and she took the position as the Wolf Queen of Solitude, she started a great war against the Empire, like an actually massive war. She gathered the support from as many kings as she could from High Rock, Morrowind and Skyrim and started a civil war known as the War of the Red Diamond. See, Potema wanted to be the Empress of the Imperial City so bad that she was willing to go to war for it. At the time, the new Empress was a 15-year-old girl who was the first in line. This 15-year-old girl was the 8th monarch and the 2nd empress regent of the Empire of Tamriel, the Empress Kaintira Septin II. She was the true ruler of the kingdom, by, by blood and by right, but Potema attempted to throw this court at her by claiming that she was a bastard child, something that she knew was a lie. So in envy, Potema started the civil war, and during the civil war, in one of the many battles, Kaintira was defeated by an enemy force and abducted. Some claim that she was executed immediately, while other sources claim that she was held prisoner for over three years before she was finally killed. Sources also debate on her actual age, some saying that she was 15 when she was executed, some saying that she was 18, and some even go so far as to say that she was only 10 years old when Potema had her killed. This is how evil Potema was, willing to kill her own people in a bloody civil war and murder the child empress 
just for a bigger throne. She of course doesn't get her way and her son ends up dying in the war and she loses the support from her army. So she decides to make her own army and she proceeds to spend the next 10 years battling the Empire alone with her undead creations and by making deals with Daedra, creating full armies of the undead and full armies of the Dremora. She ends up eventually dying at the end of the siege. And now finally back in Elder Scrolls Skyrim, a group of conjurers are attempting to summon her and give her own life through a quest found below Solitude. Though thankfully, the Dragonborn is there to stop this evil woman from coming back to life. Now that's my top 10 most evil female villains in Elder Scrolls Skyrim, but now for some quick runner-ups. People that I just couldn't fit in the top 10, but are so evil, I still needed to put them here somehow. I can't do an evil villain video and not put in Helga in here, who is constantly sullying the good people of Riften with her dirty and sexual Dibelin arts. Someone should really stop her, her niece is like so embarrassed for her. Galathal, who also in Riften is the one who can change her face using flesh sculpture magic. Apparently she has been ruining people's faces so badly that she has lost all of her customers and is now forced to conduct her business in the literal backwater of the world. And a last shout out to Agnes, the cleaning lady of Fort Greymoor. Apparently she can't stop cleaning at night and the noise keeps the bandits awake. She was so annoying that the bandits performed the black sacrament in order to have her killed by the dark brotherhood. Thank you so much for watching and if you're trying to get some more Skyrim content then be sure to follow me on Twitter and subscribe to me here on YouTube. I would also like to uh, thank Wyatt Curlin, Toby Oliver, Dylan Baker, Zach Bowell and Casey Butler for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. Also, also, before you leave, make sure to watch my secrets video on Clavicus Vile, one of my favorite Daedras of all time. I did a video about him just about a week ago and it's one of my favorite videos so far, so please make sure to watch it if you haven't already. Thank you all again for being here and see you all next time.